Well, don't just start knickknacking, Mia. To today we are going to finish the final three chapters of Ivy and Bean. Let's get started. I can't read already. Bean's backyard. You peek over. See if Nancy is there. Said I. Said Bean. She might be in the yard looking for me. Ivy nodded and stood up. She could just see over the fence. I don't see anyone, she said. Where do you think is Nancy? Then they're probably out looking for me, said Bean. She pictured her mom and Nancy with worried faces. I've been gone for a long time. Let's go get the worms, said Ivy, pulling herself over the fence. Bean's backyard was a big rectangle. There was a nice part with flowers and neat grass. And then there was a the messy part with lumpy grass and a trampoline and a playhouse that Bean had had since she was little. She could barely fit inside it anymore. There was stuff lying all over the messy part. Hula hoops, balls, arrows, shovels, buckets, and a broken stilt. Bean had really hurt herself that time. The, the worms were in the messy part. Over next to the playhouse where the ground was wet, Ivy and Bean grabbed shovels and a bucket and got to work. At first, there was just a lot of mud, but then there was mud in a few worms. But the more they dug, the more worms they found. Six, ten, fourteen. The worms oozed and curled through the mud. Bean liked the way they were fat one second and stretched out and skinny the next. She and Bean dug deeper and deeper until they had made a big muddy pit in the ground. It was almost two feet across and water dribbled down the sides. Worms were squirming at the bottom of the pit, trying to get away. Bean felt a little sorry for them, but Ivy just picked them up and dumped them into the bucket. Bean thought of Nancy kicking and waggling, and then she began dumping them into the bucket too. How many do we need? asked Bean. The worms were piled up on top of one another on the bottom of the bucket. Ivy looked. Only ten, but the more worms we have, the harder she'll dance. This is enough, said Bean. Poor worms. All right, said Ivy. She looked towards Bean's house. Let's go see if your sister's home. Okay, but we'd better sneak. Bean's house was good. Bean's house was good for sneaking. At the back, there was a porch. If you crawled like a bug across the porch, you could look through the big window into the kitchen. The girls ran toward the bushes that grew next to Bean's porch and ducked down, hiding. Quietly, they began to creep up the stairs that led to the porch. Very quietly, they crawled across the floor. And then, Bean heard a sound. She froze. There it was again. A sob. It was like someone was crying, Bean listened. It sounded like Nancy. Bean put her hand on Ivy's arm and pointed to the window. They crawled to it and peered in like spies. There's Nancy. There was Nancy. She was sitting at the kitchen table. She was alone. She was crying. Bean got a funny feeling. Nancy was usually so bossy, so nosy, so sure she was right. It was weird to see her cry all alone. Maybe she's crying because she thinks you're lost, whispered Ivy. That's kind of nice. Bean didn't answer. She had never thought she could make Nancy cry. Bean felt a lump in her throat. She remembered that Nancy let her snuggle into her bed when she had bad dreams about the spooky man. She remembered that Nancy let her play with her glass animals sometimes, even after she had broke this, broken the starfish. She remembered that Nancy had once bought her a fairy coloring book with her own money. Bean looked at the tears rolling down Nancy's cheeks. Poor Nancy, Bean sniffed. Maybe she didn't want to put the dancing spell on her sister after all. Nancy said something. Bean couldn't hear it, but she was sure it was a, something about missing her. What? said Bean, Bean's mother from another room. Everyone has them, Nancy shouted. Everyone but me. I'm, 
I'm the only one who has to wait. She began to cry harder. What? Bean pressed her face against the window. Uh-oh, guys. Who, what is Nancy crying about? Her mother's voice said, We've talked about this a million times. You can have them when you're 12. Even some of stupid Bean's friends have them, yelled Nancy. Suddenly, Bean knew what Nancy was crying about. She's not sad about me at all. She's crying about pierced ears. She hissed Bean to Ivy. Bean got mad, really mad. She was even madder than when she had been. She was even madder than she had been when Nancy had tried to drag her into the house. Bean was so mad she forgot all about being sneaky. She stood up and banged on the window with her fist. You're a big turkey, she yelled. Nancy stared and then jumped up. Hey, hey, Mom, Bean's back. Get in here, Bean Breath. She flashed out the back door before Bean could even begin to run. In two seconds flat, she had Bean by the arm and was pulling her in the door. Just wait till Mom gets a hold of you. You're going to be in so, so, so much trouble. Stop! yelled Ivy. She stood in front of Nancy, waving the wand at her face. I command you to free Bean. This next chapter is called The Spell. Nancy stopped dragging Bean across the porch and looked at Ivy. Who are you? she asked. Ivy smiled and slitted her eyes. With her white face and red blood drops, she looked very witchy. It matters not. Free my friend, she hissed. What animal makes a hissing sound? Wow, thought Bean. She's really going for it. Nancy dropped Bean's arm and lifted one eyebrow, which was something she just learned how to do and did all the time. Let's see right there. What's that supposed to be? She asked in a snippy, grown-up way, looking at Ivy's wand. She shook the wand in Nancy's face. This is your doom, she said in a deep voice. It's a wand, said Bean, looking back and forth between Ivy and Nancy. She was beginning to worry. Maybe Ivy was going for it too much. With older sisters, you had to be able to say that you've never meant what you said and that you were just kidding the whole time. Ivy didn't seem to know that. Nancy snorted. It's a stick, she said. She looked at Ivy's robe and giggled. Nice bathrobe, too. You guys are complete and total dweebs. Uh-oh. Bean looked at Ivy. Her cheeks were red under the white paint, and her eyes glittered. She looked like she was might cry. Suddenly, Bean was furious. Before, she'd been really mad. But now, Nancy was making fun of Ivy, and that made Bean furious. Without even stopping to think about it, Bean reached down from under the bucket she was still carrying. For a second, she got a big handful of pink worms. They squiggled in her hand. Then she threw them at Nancy's face. Some of them fell onto Nancy's shirt. Some of them got stuck in her hair, but one landed on her eyebrow and wiggled there, trying to find some dirt. Nancy was so surprised, she froze. She just stood there with her mouth hanging open, staring at Bean. Calmly, Bean reached into the bucket again and got another handful of worms. She aimed better this time. She got one in Nancy's mouth. Phooey! The pink worm went flying out as Nancy spit it out. There was a tiny moment of quiet, and then she opened her mouth wide and let out a giant scream. Bean and Ivy looked at each other and smiled. Whatever happens next, their eyes said, that was worth it. And then they began to run. Ugh, look at her. Nancy tore after them, still screaming. Bean zigzagged across the lawn and be because she knew it was harder to catch someone who was zigzagging. 
Ivy zigzag too, right behind Bean. Worms, worms! Nancy was screaming. She had lost her mind. Ah! Bean could hear her mother calling. What on earth? Girls, girls! Bean and Ivy ran around the trampoline with Nancy close behind. They jumped over the hula hoop in the stilt and headed for the trees. Nancy followed, still screaming. She was right behind them. She was so close, she could almost grab the soft fold of Ivy's robe. She was just about to get it. Help! squealed Ivy. Bean gave a yank and pulled the robe away in the nick of time. Ivy and Bean swerved for the playhouse. Maybe they could get inside before Nancy tackled them. Come on! Bean yelled. Together, they jumped over the worm pit, squeezed into the playground playhouse and slammed the door. Woo! They said together. Then it happened. Nancy was still chasing them. She was running toward the playhouse and toward the worm pit, the big muddy worm pit. Bean and Ivy knew it was there, but Nancy didn't. And she didn't see it. Guys, I want you to picture in your head. Nancy is right in front of the worm pit and she does not see it. Make a prediction. What will happen next? Okay, it's showtime. She charged toward the playhouse and whoops, her foot landed on the side of the muddy pit. Ivy and Bean looked outside the playhouse window and they saw Nancy skidding on the slimy edge of the hole. Ah! Well, that was loud. Be back and forth. She wobbled, trying to keep her bounce. Ah! Oh, stop it, Nancy. She kicked out one foot. She waved her hand, arms wildly. She kicked out her, out her other foot. She waved. She kicked. It was perfect. She's dancing, yelled Bean. The spell worked, yelled Ivy. And just at that moment, with a sloppy, gloopy fud, Nancy slipped off the edge and landed in the muddy goo at the bottom of the worm pit. Ah. No dessert. Oh, that's bad. No dessert, said Bean. No videos for a week, but at least it didn't make me stay in my room. Ivy was sitting next to Bean on her front porch. It was almost dark. They watched the bugs flying around the streetlight. I don't think they're really mad, said Ivy. You don't? They had seemed pretty mad to Bean. They have to act mad so they'll seem fair to your sister, Ivy said. But your mom had this little teeny smile on her face when she pulled Nancy out of the pit. She thought it was funny. Now that is funny a little. If that was me, wouldn't it be so funny? Bean smiled too, remembering. It was funny. It was great. Nancy says she's never going to speak to either of us again. And she took back the coloring book she gave me. Well, she never spoke to me before today, so that won't be any different to me. It will be better to me. I bet she doesn't stick to it. Bean yawned. It had been a big day. She turned to Ivy. Do you think the spell is what made her dance? Of course, Ivy sounded very sure. But after a minute... She said, I didn't have time to say the spell, really. I just sort of fought it at the last second. Bean stared into sh the shadowy yard. Maybe that's why she didn't dance for very long, only because you fought the spell instead of saying it. Next time I'll say it. Are you going to do it again? On who? Bean asked. I was thinking about that Mrs. Trance said Ivy. Bean pictured Mrs. Trance kicking up her legs and feet on the edge of a muddy pit. It would be a beautiful sight. Isn't that beautiful? Can you teach me how to burp like that? Asked Bean. Sure, Ivy said. Maybe I'll try something new on Mrs. Trance, like a storm of grasshoppers. Is that a hard one? No, but we'll have to... We'll have to start with a lot of grasshoppers. It seems like all the spells have bugs in them. Not all of them, said Ivy. Potions don't. Potions. That sounded fun. Let's make a potion, Bean said. 
Okay, Ivy said. Tomorrow we'll make potions. Hi, look at Mrs. Trance. <sighs> I know what. Tomorrow let's fix up a lab in your room. Then we can make potions. She pictured a lab with shelves full of little bottles. She and Ivy would wear goggles. Ivy sat up straighter. Yeah, that would be good. We'll dump the dressing room and get some shelves. Shelves with little bottles and maybe a counter. Bean, Bean's mother came out onto the front porch. There you are, it's almost bath time. Ivy, do you want me to walk you home? Okay, said Ivy, but Bean's mom sat down beside Bean and looked at the nighttime sky. You girls certainly had a big day, haven't you? Bean leaned against her mother's arm. Tomorrow, we're going to make a lab in Ivy's room. You are? Are you? Said Bean's mom. What for? Potions, said Ivy. What kind of potions, asked Bean's mom. Secret potions, said Ivy. There was a silence. Then Bean's mom said, no matches, no poison, no explosions, no deadly fumes, no buggy Nancy. Is that clear? Ivy and Bean looked at each other and rolled their eyes. Weren't you the one who was always telling me to play with her? Said Bean. Wasn't this all your idea in the first place? Bean's mother smiled at them in the dark. The light on Ivy's porch came on, and Ivy's mom stepped out the door. She waved across the street. Time to come in, honey. Down the stairs and across the circle, she came in the moonlight. Ivy stood up. So did Bean. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. And that day after that, Bean added in her mind. Ivy, holding her mother's hand in the middle of the street, turned around to look at Bean. And the day after that, she said... That is the end of today's book. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.